I do have a, a really strong awareness of how brief life is and the word unfairness sits with me quite a fair bit. And I remember just climbing this hill and I just had like tears coming down my eyes because the pain was pretty significant and I thought this was going to be a problem. I do remember the uh, look in the doctor's eyes. He said, Justin, um, uh, it's very unfortunate uh, but uh, we found cancer. I don't know if I'd be gone at 45 or 52, and I, and I really, really recognise that that's to be a true statement. Whereas most people don't have to face their mortality at 40. I had a one and a half year old, three and a half year old, 15 year old, and a beautiful partner at home, and I just, just wasn't prepared for what was about to happen. I keep coming back to these two words, you don't have choice, you don't have control. So for me, a big part of my getting through the suffering and, and the difficult period was do whatever you can to get control, whether that means two minutes on the bike in the morning, getting control, because there's so much around me the rest of the day I have no control over, but at least I can go to bed saying I have a percentage of control over that day. Whatever stage of my treatment, I always tried to have some numbers that I could push my body to to try and defeat and give me that sense of victory. They symbolise not being defeated by your experience go forward. They experience victory, personal satisfaction. If I only achieve one of the seven numbers up there, I've got, I've at least I've still achieved something. So my goal is the escalator gets higher. I got to stand at 90. I go 88 or something, I feel the shout in the back of my head saying, you got to get back on, you muppet. The challenge will come with the numbers um, because that's when I get this incredibly surreal taste at the top of my mouth um, from the chemo. So that should come in roughly about oh, two and a half to four minutes. The 
still dysfunctionally exhilarating. <laughs> Finishing. It's not going to be the greatest day ahead, so um, that is very, very satisfying to know that um, I won't have that disgusting taste in my mouth potentially next time I come back on the, the bike. There's a great photo that um, really has impacted me personally that Jared Gruber took that I was giving a time of real vulnerability of a guy climbing Stelvio and all you can see is this 30, 40 switchbacks on the photo and, and it really meant a lot to me because that's what cancer is, it's switchback after switchback after switchback. A good friend of mine, Adam, said to me, if we get through this, we've got to go to Corsica because I know how much you love Corsica and that's going to be the victory lap. There's three or four moments that happen in the chemo experience where you want to control your breathing. You really try and get into that distant place that you can accept what's happening. Justin J. McLean. You are It's been 20 weeks of chemo, but the last four in particular have really fallen off a cliff afterwards. And, and that's why you want to do stupid things like get on the bike at 6 a.m. this morning, because I do have control over that. I do have a choice to go do that. Just get rushing.
rushes like that, like that, and it feels like there's something physical being deposited out of my body. <laughs> it's quite full. <fun. laughs> so there's the headlines, there's radiation, surgery, rehab, first round of chemo, second round of chemo, but I just wasn't prepared for all the unintended consequences of cancer. And that is the permanent physical irritation you feel in your body. Like radiation sunburns you internally. You are penetrated with a microwave times 40,000 to a five millimetre radius in my rectum. So my life for a period of time was just, I was internally sunburnt. I walked around with that and I've never experienced such pain and agitation in my life. So I think the thing for me about cancer was breaking spokes, climbing the hill. Losing your brakes on the descent. They're all the things that I wasn't prepared for on the ride. Our lives are so much about plan B's and plan C's and plan D's, particularly in um, Western world where we have risk adjusted plans for risk adjusted plans. I just thought, you know, over the millions of years of existence, I've got this 40 year window or 80 year window to, to have a crack at something. So no plan B for me was about all of your chips on the table being put into beating cancer. And it just didn't feel right to be called a survivor. Instead of survivorship, I want thrivership. Thrivership is not a word. But it's a, it's a mindset, it's an approach, it's an experience that people should be entitled to. I unequivocally believe you've got to have suffering to have glory. I think it's naive to think that you get glory without suffering. Suffering is intrinsically in, in, intertwined in the fabric of life and you're getting the fullness and understanding of life. You, you don't understand glory if there has been no price. The question then comes to me, what is glory? Corsica is glory. In the scheme of it, it's a small thing, but it's much more symbolic and much more powerful than just, I'm going to ride a mountain in the Mediterranean, you know. It's the bow on a year of cancer. It's wrapping, it's closing it off. It's that sense of euphoria. Uh, people that have been just intimate and really caring and beautiful during this process. It's two months to the day we start riding, so that's gonna be the victory lap. You know, that's gonna be a time when we congratulate ourselves on what we pulled off. The overwhelming sensation I feel today is I'm thinking a lot about the Stelvio photo. That's where all this started. Now, 11 months after radiation, when that idea was birthed, to be able to go get on a plane with an amazing full bill of health with some of the greatest friends and people dearest to me in my life, I find that quite spine jiggling. Santa, you need to, you need to look after your little brother, okay? Yeah. Bye, gorgeous. Bye,
in life you have mountains every day. But how I choose to respond to that is really important. So it's just really cool to have that sense of feeling that I actually beat this. I just felt such a great sense of accomplishment and I just wanted to ride. So we're at zero here on the water and then we basically roll along this ridge for some time, up and down, up and down, and then at about 60k, we're going to be hitting our lunch spot here and then we've got a fair bit more climbing as we descend towards the coast. That's your day. Amazing. Okay, hey, this yeah. is the visual that we had from humble Melbourne, the quiet towns, great, great people. Well, I'm pretty happy this morning, so I have to thank you, because I wouldn't be here if you weren't. <laughs> It feels like an out-of-body experience for me, but this is 12 months of preparing, and it's actually happened, so I think it's a very, very surreal experience. I don't know, I feel sort of like a little bit eerie today. I think it's pretty incredible what Justin's doing it. It's not easy to come and ride in Corsica, even when you're in good shape. To try and do it now just shows the kind of spirit he's got. It's fantastic. He said that he just got the itinerary for this trip. He was still having chemo. That's unreal. I think it shows how Therapeutic, getting out and riding your bike can really be, can be a blessing. I've been dreaming of that. That's the route right. that the Google gives you. Yeah. 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 Google map. Yeah. Three, five, five. Yeah. Big 32 kilometer climb today. Um, so that's going to be tough and test me. Because the close road is the tour de course road. Yeah, what you got to a closure before a junction? The junction is closed. The junction itself. You cannot mm -hmm. cross over. Right. Let's just go the alternative route. Yeah, yeah. we'll do this. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a bit there. Take us down to the
feel a lot of good pain going through my body at the moment. And that's why we signed up for this mountain-esque silly ride, because for me, I wanted to feel good pain. I want to feel a pain that I could choose. Because the issue around cancer is that you don't get a choice. It is bad pain thrust on you from day one. So I embraced the pain this week. I embraced the varying emotions and I really felt privileged to be able to experience that. So it's just really cool to have that sense of feeling that I actually beat this. Innately, we're born to connect. You need support, you cannot do it alone because it's so hard and it's so intimidating and it's so non-linear. So I find the symbolism of the bike just absolutely appropriate for life. It's so cool that I'm so far from Melbourne, that world that happened, it just feels really cool to be able to close a chapter in my life with such an amazing experience. You go through such varying emotions of euphoria, loneliness, darkness, but then you come around a corner and you see an amazing city and you know that you've got a beautiful descent. Then everything just sort of washes away and everything's okay. I genuinely feel the hardship and the loneliness and the fear, and they're all okay emotions. You can determine how you write them out, but don't do it by yourself. You can determine whether a system will dominate you, or you can determine whether you will thrive rather than just survive cancer. The mountain will finish. The mountain always finishes.